All right, here we are tonight, Wrestling Philosophy Podcast with Coach Carlin Yetz of Columbus to Sales joining us. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Man, listen, you have quite a story to tell, and the word unique comes to mind, but but to be honest, it's not a unique story. It's it's just a story that's not told often enough. And so I want to give you a you an opportunity to tell that story start to finish. Uh, bring us up to to even today. Um, you, you told an incredible story uh, just a minute ago before we started recording um, that really, really plays into your journey. So without further ado, let's just jump in from the beginning. What got you started in the sport of wrestling? Uh, I come from a family of wrestlers, actually. Um, my uncles, uh, my brother, Danyasha, uh, wrestled for Ohio State, uh, multi-time state champion, uh, student of Big Red. Um, my uncles, I had cousins wrestle for Ohio State. Uh, it's just in our blood. But uh, I was one person who didn't want to do it. Um, I had no drive to do it. Um, kind of living in the shadow of all my brothers. Um, three of them played football for Student Little Big Red all at the same time. Uh, they were kind of the hometown boys and you know, had their likeness on T-shirts and run tubbo run all over the place and stuff like that. You know, So when I was asked, Hey, are you going to be like your brothers? I was, t I was like, no, I'm going to be in the band. Uh, I wanted to have nothing to do with anything they were doing, um, just because you know they were doing their own thing. But um, eventually, uh, after coming around, uh, actually, my first, my first ever wrestling match, which I really don't kind of talk about this unless, uh, unless I really want a kid to feel good about themselves. But my first ever wrestling match was for um, youth wrestling, Stuvo Big Red, and. Um, you know, I went to the practices. I really wasn't into it again. You know, I was just kind of just there because my brothers you know, went to Steven Little Big Red. And um, they called me down to the mat. I went down there. The kid took me down. I went to my back. The ref called the pin. And I went, there was the three count. <laughs> so <laughs> I was on the wrong kind. Of, it was the wrong kind of wrestling and uh, stuff like that. And I just didn't do it again. Um, I just, you know, my mind just wasn't focused on there. You know, I was focused on being a kid. And so um, years down the line, um, moved a couple places, came back home to Steubenville, went to uh, Harding Middle School uh, my eighth grade year. And uh, the coach there at the time was uh, Joseph Yanok. And um, he, actually, he actually coached my brothers when they were in middle school at Harding as well. And he was like, dude, are you coming out for wrestling? Uh, it was after football season. I was like, nah, I'm not wrestling. And he was like, what do you mean you're not wrestling? Like, you know who your brother is? Like, you know, you know what your family has done here? And I'm like, ah, I'm not wrestling. He, he was like, listen, he goes, give me a week. And if you don't like it, you can quit. I won't bother you ever again about it and everything like that. And so I said, all right. And I mean, and, and Mr. Yanok, he was a very, very cool guy. Um, he, he, you know, he was just a funny guy. And, you know, this man, this man asked me to, to jump off a bridge, I think about it, and then I look at him, I go, sure, I'll jump off the bridge for you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he, I went out, and things just clicked naturally. It was, it was so amazing to, to be on the mat and just things click. And he's just looking at me like, dude, like, this is your sport. And he goes, you know, I, I, I don't know about, you know, I don't know how you feel about football or whatever else. He goes, but this is your sport. And um, that was my first year, my eighth grade year and at Harding. And I uh, ended up taking second at the time where they had junior OVCs um, and everything like that. Uh, Steubenville's big uh, rival at the time was East Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And um, it was kind of funny because they put, uh, I remember this like it was yesterday, they put the East Liverpool A and East Liverpool B on opposite sides and said, well, they said they're going to meet in the finals. And I was like, oh, are they really? Okay. So I beat the Liverpool B guy, and I met the A guy in the finals, and he ended up um, beating me. But it was stuff like that. That like I love that challenge. I love that challenge that wrestling brings. So I mean, once I got into it, it was just you know, it was it was full go. And you know, I said Harding, uh, it was fun. Uh, Mr. Yanoff made it fun. He he made it. He had a couple sayings. Uh, one saying that I still say to this day that he says, you know, when I tell somebody something, I look at him and go, did I stutter? <laughs> you know, and that's and that's kind of my homage to him. Uh, still, uh, when I when I coach, so 
I got to ask you this because you, you obviously, Steubenville, you're, you're an Ohio Valley guy. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What <laughs> is it about the Ohio Valley? Number one, I swear everybody there is related <laughs> to each other, you know, and that's more of a joke, but I kid, but oh my gosh, I think everybody's cousins. And then what is it about the pride? Oh my gosh. It's just this, like this huge pride that comes out of that area. Everybody that comes out of that area <laughs> Number one, relator knows each other, and then they have a story, a prideful story to tell. What is it about that area of the state? When, when, when you come from, I would say it's from Zanesville on, all the way until you reach the uh, West Virginia PA border. When you come from that area, there's just something about us. Um, I don't see it being in central Ohio for as long as I've been, I've been here since 2003. You just don't see that grit that, that kids from the Ohio Valley have. And in particular, Steubenville, um, we just have a, a walk about us. We just have that confidence about us. We're, you know, I, I never went to Steubenville Big Red myself, but, you know, it's just, you know, but I was born there, I was raised there. And it's just, you have a, have a, just a demeanor about yourself that goes, I'm from Steubenville. We're badasses. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's just, that's just what we have. And I mean, just the, from the coaching uh, from the coaching staff to the teachers, we all have that Ohio Valley pride. And I mean, I, I was just actually talking to um, one of the assistant coaches, uh, I coached with Tom Jones. And I said, dude, I said, we need to head out east. I said, you know, we're doing, you know, one day tournaments here. Out there, it's two day tournaments. Out there, it's grinding the first day and then grinding the second day. You know, and I said, it's, it's just something out there that, you know, us Valley boys, uh, you know, not the California Valley, the, the the grit, you know, from the mountains. Yeah, we were just we're just a different breed. And I mean, and the person to attest to that that I can think of is is my brother Danyasha. Um, you know, he was just so determined to be the best. And uh, funny story, uh, he, he's a great storyteller. If there's some if there's one person you need to talk to on storytelling with him. Um, he tells a story about how they were at, um, I believe, at uh, Bel Air, Bel Air tournament back in the day. And, you know, he was just a focused person. You know, he wouldn't talk to anybody. You know, he'd go to the tournament. He'd be focused on what he was doing. And but at the same time, like, I know the term wasn't back then, but he had fanboys. He had, you know, fanboys that would go, oh, my God, it's, it's Danyashi. Yes, oh, God. Oh, can you sign this? And, you know, and they want to talk to him. And, and he was just like, and his teammates were like, leave him alone. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess with him. And, you know, and the teammates would be like, you know, oh, no, like, oh, no, it's cool. It's cool. And he's like, no, leave him alone. And, you know, he would look over and he said a couple uh, choice words I'm not going to say here, but it was just like, you know, that's just certain the mentality that we have coming from Steubenville, coming from the Ville, uh, what we like to call it, of just, you know, we're focused, we're in, and, you know, and, and it's going to be a fight. Yeah. Yeah. And, you and you know, we, we've seen that at the next level. We don't have to name name all the names, but kind of an, kind of an overachieving kind of surprise it it probably doesn't surprise you but when you look at some of the names that are now wrestling at the next level mm -hmm. um you know there's like well where'd this kid come from well even even being a follower of central Ohio wrestling yeah. you know we would wrestle Steubenville we would wrestle those valley teams in some of the bigger tournaments and and those kids are always good and always uh uh placing and and and, mm -hmm. and contending but then they go off to NC State or Cleveland State and they're like wait a minute where are these kids coming from <laughs> it's like you know you know exactly. right exactly and I mean and the area we have I believe one of the toughest tournaments in the country with the OVAC that's a three-day tournament you know there, there's not too many three-day tournaments that you know you have to you know other than the state tournament that you grind on the first day and then you got to grind on the second day and then you know if you make it you got to push it out in a tough finals match or, you know, a tough even uh, placing match just to just to do it. So, I mean, you know, having that tournament there, and I believe uh, back when I was there, um, I graduated in 2001, um, you know, you had just, um, you had Ohio teams and West Virginia teams. Uh, now they've added a couple PA teams. Now they've added, you know, further down south in West Virginia with Parkersburg in them. And now it's like a real big grind because, you know, it's, it's, it's adding more teams and, you know, it's a 32 man tournament and it's just it I mean it it tests it shows to me the winner of our placers in the OVAC they're gonna place that state in Ohio. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, to me that's just facts of of you know the toughness that we have to grind out for three days straight. You know, when we get to the state tournament, 
hey, we've been here already. We've right. done this before, you know, and that and that's kind of the the mentality that, you know, that we all have is that, you know, once we get to there, say tournaments take long. Right, right, right. Yeah, those those tournaments are so huge for 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 all the programs. And like you said, you 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 want to you want to expose the sales stallions to that kind of stuff. I'm sure yeah. Coach Palmer does, too. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, and, and unfortunately, the last couple of years uh, due to COVID, we haven't had the yeah you know the track record of being able to have those big tournaments or they get canceled or, or whatever mm-hmm. so hopefully knock on wood we're back on track for all that kind of stuff so you skipped ahead a little bit you went from eighth grade to graduation tell mm-hmm. us about your 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 high school years what you know your wrestling of course but also yeah. your life during the high school years um so my high school years uh my mom she did not want to deal with Steubenville big red anymore uh, with the craziness with my brothers. Um, so she said, hey, what do you want to do? Uh, uh, as everybody knows, West Virginia is right on the other side of the Ohio River. Um, so we ended up um, going to Weird Madonna uh, Catholic School. Um, it wasn't my first choice. Uh, it wasn't something that I you know, said, hey, that's where I want to go. Um, it just kind of fell into our laps. And um, you know, I, I went there and I would say the best four years of my life. I, I, I had a ball there. Uh, even though I'm not a Catholic, uh, not a practicing Catholic, not a person who's in the organized re- religion, but I mean, you know, just the from the teachers to the coaches, uh, it was fun. It was really, really fun. Uh, my high school coach there was Jamie Lesho um, and uh, Ray Larkey. Uh, he was an assistant. Jeff Miller was an assistant there too. Uh, all accomplished wrestlers. Um, Ray Larkey was a power lifter. We used to call him Tree Trunk because he looked at like someone cut him straight from the stump. Uh, but we, uh, you know, I went there um, and this, again, a small school, 150 kids. Um, we had 70 people my freshman year on the team. Wow. Uh, so, you know, so I went from, you know, middle school having, you know, 40 deep to having seven, uh, which was a big uh, shock to me. Um, also to a big culture shock as um I believe I was the only black male in that school for four years. Wow. The whole uh, school. The whole school. Uh, wow. I, think, I, think there, I think there might have been a senior, so it may just be three years. But, uh, you know, um, I can't remember if there was or not. It's been, it's been been a while. But for the majority of the time, you know, I was the only person that looked like me. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't really anybody else. So uh, just to really kind of – and I'm used to that. Um it wasn't weird. It wasn't strange. Um, I was homeless for a time with my mom. We moved to New York uh, and stayed with my uncle, and I ended up staying up there, uh, and she ended up moving back. And um, we lived on Long Island out in uh, Port Jefferson, Quorum area. And, you know, there wasn't too many like me out there, but it never bothered me. I was never I was never one to fill out a place. I've always kind of made my place wherever I go. Um, so being at Madonna wasn't like – weird or you know i'm the only black person here out of you know a bunch of white kids you know i i made my place and you know i my mom always tells me or always told me um you know you you carry yourself in a way where you demand respect you never say that you demand respect but you carry yourself in a way where people respect you and i go up i've never noticed it i just don't put up with people's shit <laughs> you know but but that's just something that she saw so so being at madonna like i said it was, it was great um wrestling wise uh like i said it was it was odd going from 40 kids in the room to seven um you know the first year wasn't so great um you know i had some success uh i was actually uh getting to uh so west virginia they do regionals then state uh there's no in between so there's two uh so there's uh regionals and states and uh i was actually my first match i got dumped on the back of my head um ref called the penny didn't stop it um and everything like that no big deal um but then i ended up uh wrestling my way back and i was in the blood round one match away from going for third and fourth uh and i couldn't lift up my head um i literally could not lift it up Uh, i wrestled all those matches like this uh, with my head down the whole entire time and winning and when we got to the final match to uh, to go uh, my coach said can you lift your head up I said I can't I said I really can't he goes this is not worth this because yeah. you're a freshman um, I cry like a baby because I, I, I felt I could do it um, and stuff but he goes you're a freshman let's let's not 
you know, injure you more than, than, than what you need to be. So was so, it your neck or a concussion or both or what? what, what was it, it? it was just a, I don't know. I like, we never went to the hospital. We never got it checked out, you know, uh, from the Valley, we're kind of tough kids. So we just yeah. kind of fuck it up and just say, ah, you know, there's some dirt on it. You'll be fine. Yep. Uh, but I, I, it could have been just a, like a, a stinger and I just couldn't, couldn't raise my head up. Got it. Um, but you know, I, I kept wrestling, uh, cause that's just the mentality that we have. It's just to go. Uh, but you know, like I said, we, you know, there wasn't back then, even though it was 2001, you know, there wasn't trainers on site and everything right. like uh, getting the ice and stuff, you know, it was just, you know, we suck it up and we went, but, uh, you know, he made the call, uh, not to injure me even more. So, um, I went ahead and we, we pulled it out. We pulled. And, uh, like I said, I, it was, it was sad because I, I, I believe I, I could have beat the next, the next guy and could have went, but you know, uh, we'll never know that. So, um, so not to jump too far ahead. And, and I definitely want to go back because you brought up the, the time in Long Island, um, mm -hmm. but not to jump too far ahead as a coach, that experience as a freshman, when you felt that disappointment, how do you translate that now as a coach to your to your to your wrestlers? Um, you know, it's it's you have a wrestler that wants to just go, that wants to do it, that you know, oh well, if you know my fingers broken or whatever, like tape it up, let's go. But at the same time, you know. I, I, I see now as a coach, he made the right call. He made the right call by pushing out. And I mean, and I've been in situations where, you know, do I let this kid wrestle and something happens? It's on my conscience. Or do I pull the kid and then got to hear it from him, his parents, and everybody else? Right. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I got to protect the kid first. Yeah. You know, rest, rest, wrestling is, is, is a is a temporary thing unless you, you know, really are dedicated to it. And, you know, and if someone's not, you know, into it hundred percent, you know, you kind of feel that out as a coach and you go, dude, there's always next year, you know, right. oh, oh, well, you don't get to be the four time state champ, only maybe the three, right. you know, stuff like that. There, there's always that, you know, so uh, it just, you know, translate it now. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the kids first. It's the kids first and it's wrestling second. And, you know, and, and I mean, I've been in, I've seen situations where coaches like, oh, you're fine or get up, you know, you can do it. And it's like, dude, really look at the kid, you know, yeah, the kid will suck it up and, you know, do it because he doesn't want to disappoint anybody, but you kind of had to step back and go, is this really worth it? Is it, is it, is it really worth getting hurt more? So, you know, he, he made the right decision and uh, I was, I was mad at him for that moment, <laughs> right. but you know, at the same time it was like, Hey, I, I could be in a wheelchair. I could be, you know, hurt even worse. Right. And the right decision was made. Yeah, I, I had uh, I've had the luxury of of rubbing elbows with with some uh, some pretty prominent people, uh, and I had a, a guy who's who's a D one coach now at, at a prominent school tell me when his oldest boy and my youngest boy were in high school, hey Rob, it's just high school wrestling, <laughs> and he and he you know I told you he's a prominent coach, but he's also been on the Olympic team, yeah. right? So when you put all this stuff in perspective, and when my kids were in high school, it was the world. Oh, yeah. But looking back now, and I don't have a dog in the fight anymore, mm -hmm. it's just high school wrestling and all that other stuff. It's not worth it. You are teaching life lessons. And obviously, the injury the injury thing is huge. Exactly. And that's, and that's kind of – it's funny because, like, I coached youth wrestling for 10 years, and, you know, parents are thinking it's the Olympics, are thinking, you know, this is, this is the pinnacle. And it's like – it's just youth wrestling. Wait till you get to high school. <laughs> like, Isn't that crazy? The parents are the worst as youth wrestler, and so was I. I was too <laughs> when they were youth. And then you learn, you know, a little bit more and a little bit more yeah. and a little bit more, and you and you grow up in the sport. That's crazy. Exactly. And I mean, and and you kind of have to calm them down and go, you know, what would you rather have? Would you rather have them win five or you know six OAC or Ohio way titles or a four-time state champion that's going to be noticed by Ohio State or Iowa or, or Michigan or Penn State and get get further along than just you know no one and like I tell like I tell Mercy no one's going to know you are a ten-time OAC champion right <laughs> no one's no one's going your parents and your family might care but when it comes to going to the next level they're looking at the high school they're not gonna you know you're not gonna have a a shit high school career 
and then them go, oh, well, you did win those 10 OAC titles. So, yeah, we'll give you a scholarship. Come on now. Right. You know, that, 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 doesn't, that, that doesn't compete. So, you know, you kind of have to, you know, check the parents a little bit. I mean, and I've been in the situation time and time again, and it's just like, God, you know, what do I do? Do I, do I make the call? Do I let the parent make the call? You know, if the parent does make the call, they're going to, you know, most likely go, put them in. He can, they, they can do it, you know, right. and it's like – uh-uh. Not, not, can't, can't be on my watch that something happens to a child like that. No, so. yeah, and there's got to be a certain level of trust as, as parents, and that's kind of my angle. Is I've never coached, I've never even wrestled, actually. So, my angle is 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 the the ultimate wrestling parent, right? So, <laughs> I've had that perspective, and you, there comes a point in time where you have to trust the yeah. coach. Period. No exactly. more questioning. You might question at, behind closed doors to your spouse or whatever. Yeah. But you're not – you just don't do it in front, and you. And there's a reason why your child is under the tutelage of this coach, right? Yeah, you exactly. just got to do it. So. Exactly. And that's, and that's one thing I see – you know, I've had it, and I see Colin with it now. And it's just like he – you know, I, 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 I wish I wish I kind of was younger than Colin to, <laughs> to see and to learn because he is just very like, this is what we're doing. This is my decision. You can bark at me all you want. Guess what? it's white noise to me. And, you know, and, and I kind of wish in my younger career of coaching that I kind of did that too, but I kind of let that kind of barking get under my skin a little bit. And, but I mean, you know, he has it to a point to where it's just like, say your opinion, like, like, like my mom would always say, I'll let you have your opinion, but at the end of the day, my decision is final. Right. And that's just, that's, that's, that's how I've tried to try to coach a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Colin, ha Colin has his ways that mm -hmm. have been successful and yeah. you can either choose to be a part of that or choose not yeah. to be a part of that. Right. Exactly. And, and um, you know, we've, we've all seen what he's done and what he's starting to bring to that program in particular. Mm -hmm. um, again, not trying to jump too far ahead, but, but obviously as a parent, you got to decide, <laughs> do I want to put up with that or not? I was going to ask you, is he as intense in the room as he is on the mat? Oh, he, I, he is. But him, but him coaching with me the first time we coached uh, was at Killer Duels in uh, Indiana. And, like, I just kind of just, like, you know, I, I got in my coaching mode. And he looked at me. He was like, damn, yeah, you're, you're intense. I was like, dude, it's go time. Like, he, he was like <laughs> – he, he, he looked at me. He was like, this year's going to be fun. Because, <laughs> like, you know, it's like someone, someone has to control us because if not, we're going to be all over the place. But he, he is intense. Colin has a passion um, like no other. You know, he, he's, he's a four-time state champ. He, you know, he loves the sport. He's, he's a student of the game. And, you know, I'm a student of the game in, in a different way. And then we also have Tom Jones on the staff, and he's a student of the game a different way. And we all just match. So, Colin, I mean, we're, we're all intense, and we all kind of, like, have to, you know, pull each other back to that chair. Yeah. And stuff. And so, I mean, it's he, he, he is, uh, but at the same time, he's, he's a lot of fun. He's yeah. a lot of fun. Good, good. Well, he does, he does get a lot of respect, even, you know, especially with the wrestlers and, and even the parents, too. So, oh, yeah. all right. Now I want to back up. So let's, let's touch, let's go back to that homeless period mm -hmm. of, of time in your life. Um, was that, was that before or after Stupid? But what, what, what age were you when that happened? I was, uh, I was around 10 when that happened. Okay. Um, we ended up um, – so my parents were divorced and everything like that, and um, my dad was supposed to be paying, uh, paying child support and everything. Uh, he had a very good job uh, working in steel mill um, back home and everything, and uh, it just happened all of a sudden. Uh, he was ordered to pay a portion of the uh, mortgage and stuff like that that they had at the house I bought, and he just didn't pay it. Uh, so, you know, I'm at school one day um, – I'm at Lincoln Elementary, uh, and I'll and I'll show how that ties. Why I mentioned that name, uh, Lincoln Elementary School, and my mom friend comes and pulls me out of school, and I go home, and there's nothing there. Uh, everything's gone out the house, and for a kid who's in fifth grade, you're just kind of like, what's going on? Yeah. You know, um, you know. She explained the situation. Uh, we went and stayed with my aunt for a while, and then um, she decided to. Uh, shipped me off to my uncle up in New York. Um, I lived with him for three years. 
uh, while I was up there. Uh, again, I really wasn't a, an, a sports kid. I really wasn't into anything. I actually, actually, I lied. I actually kind of got into hockey a little bit. Uh, oh. You know, with the, with the Rangers and stuff like that. When when you move to New York, you have to become a sports fan, and it's the Rangers, the Yankees, and the Giants. Right. For, for me, it was. And you, and I, you I, didn't get into lacrosse while you were out there, huh? No, 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 no lacrosse for me. It, it was hockey, and. Um, just the physicality of hockey just, you know, drew me to it, you know, and that, and that should have been, that should have been kind of a, 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 uh, uh, just kind of a thing that, that, to, that tell me you should get into wrestling. Yeah. But I, I, I really enjoyed street hockey and rollerblading and stuff like that. I, I didn't get on the ice much, but just, you know, street hockey and playing with the kids and being aggressive, hip checking, you know, I, I, if, if it wasn't, if, if I didn't get into wrestling, I would have been a hockey player. Uh, I probably would have been a goon because <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I just loved it um, and, and I was into it. And actually, my, my science teacher in New York, he kind of saw it in me and he was trying to get me to come out to wrestle. And I was like, ah, no, nah, nah. my brother wrestles. Because uh, at the time when I was up there, my brother was, um, I think, getting ready to graduate out of Ohio State. Okay. Um, and uh, Russ Hellickson had, uh, had his camps and they had put my brother on a poster. And they couldn't make enough posters because people were, you know, seeing my brother and they knew who he was. And, you know, he sent some to me and I was giving them out to the kids. And they were just like, oh, my God, like, who's this guy who's wrestling? I was like, oh, you know, that's my brother. He's a multi-time state champ. Blah, blah. And, I mean, you know, kids were just asking for them. They rushed left and right. And, um, you know, he was trying to get me out. And I was just like, ah, that's my brother. That's not me. You know, again, again, it's that mentality of, you know, when you – when you try to say, oh, your brother's doing it, you want to do it, it's like, nah, nah it's, it's not for me. It's not for me. Huh. But um, but we ended up, um, they ended up having a fallout. Um, my uncle gave me kind of an ultimatum of like, you know, do you want to stay here? Do you want to go with your mom? I went with my mom. Uh, we were homeless for about half a year, uh, moving from shelter to shelter uh, on Long Island. Um, probably, again, the best time of my life because huh. my mom made it an adventure. You know, uh, she told me, she said, you know, you are you are the definition of ghetto fabulous because you don't her 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 famous saying was you don't have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. Uh -huh. And nobody would know you don't just because, again, the way you carry yourself. I love it. That's great. You know, it's just, that was just, you know, she just, you know, just said, you know, that's I see that in you. I see that, you know, you don't let anything get to you. And if, there, and if it does, nobody knows it. So, uh, you know, we, we, we you know, hopped from shelter to shelter um, on Long Island. And then she asked me again, she says, hey, do you want to do you want to go back home or do you want to try to make this work up here? I said, let's head back home. And, you know, we went back home, um, stayed with my brother, uh, Jamar. He's the one next to me. Um, there's nine years between me and him. Okay. Uh, so we stayed with him. I uh, went to Harding. Uh, I ended up actually moving out from them and actually going to stay with my dad's brother, who uh, my uncle Nate, um, who was a very good football player. Him, my dad and him were good football players for Winnersville. Okay. Uh, back when it was Winnersville, not Indian Creek. Okay. Uh, and stuff like that. So I, I ended up. Um, I ended up uh, staying with him while I was going to Harding, uh, played football and stuff like that. So uh, I've had a lot of a lot of influences in my life, uh, and a lot of people kind of trying to guide me the right way uh, through life. So. I, I, I tell you what, it it sounds like you know that's 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 a period of your life, ten years old. That's very yeah. impressionable, and the upheaval and the lack of. I mean, were you going to school at the time? Yeah, the six yeah. Months? I was I was going to school. Uh, the way that they do it in New York was, um, you know, we were staying in shelters, but, you know, my mom, she was a hustler. Uh, like she would say, I had to steal from Peter, Paul, Mary, and sometimes Jesus and stick my hand in God's pocket when he's not looking. Um, you know, she was a hustler. And so what they would do is they would basically uh, give me a, uh, a bus or well, the short bus basically that's the bus i would take okay and it would drive me all the way from wherever we were at all the way to the school that i was still going to okay um so that way it didn't disturb anything or i wasn't hopping from school to school to school um you know so they made that happen to where i was still consistent with 
going to the same school. Good. Um, and I did, I did that for, I think like two or three months. Okay. Stuff. So, you know, I was consistent, um, you know, and, and that really helped a lot um, kind of keeping me on a straight and narrow path and not, you know, putting me in newer environments every time we move somewhere. Um, so that was, that was really nice uh, that, that I was able to do that. And again, like I said, we moved back home, went to Harding and stuff and, you know, we're, we're rolling in eighth grade. So it sounds like, again, what I was getting at was a lot of upheaval at that time of any, any young man's life can yeah. create all kinds of issues in, in adulthood, but you've got this positive mentality and it sounds like your mom had an incredible influence on you, but you also mentioned other people like a hodgepodge of, of people. How, yeah. how does somebody at 10 years old take take all of that positive when when really look around you there's not a whole lot of positivity going on how, how did how did you you piece all that together um everybody let me be a kid that was the big thing uh i, I look back on it and it was like nobody nobody told me you have to grow up now or you have to you know you're in a bad situation it was you know protect me at all costs. You know, I'm, 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 I'm the baby, I'm the baby of my family with my four other brothers. And also I'm the baby out of all my cousins. So, you know, I was the last one and everybody was like, you know, protect me at all costs. And, you know, and, and everybody loved my mom. And so it was like, you know, you're in a hard hardship. Okay. We'll protect Carlin and we'll make sure he is all right for you. And so, you know, it, it was, it was just, it was it was the village taking care of the child. Okay, and the boils down to, and like I said, it, it, it was you know I was I was allowed to still be a kid, but at the same time, um, growing up in, in in the household I did with with my uncle um, in New York, I kind of had to kind of grow up a little bit, a little probably a little bit quicker than than I really had to, but it again shaped me and formed me into the person that I am today. You know, I. I I was put in situations where I had to kind of, you know, step up and be that person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a shy kid. I was a shy kid. I'm a shy person now. I don't like people, but yet people love me. Uh, but yeah, you know, I know how to talk to people and stuff like that. And so, you know, it was it was kind of a protect me at all cost thing. Uh, the village raising me and, you know, them just, you know, everybody loving my mom and making sure that I was fine and making sure that I, I, I could be a kid for, for as long as I could be. That's awesome. That's 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 so cool that you know the, the the village has such an influence on you in a positive way, and and really things could go south. It sounds like at yeah. almost every turn. So, all right. So let's get caught back up. You go. You move. So so how much? I mean, you you mentioned it before, and I don't want to make a huge factor out of it, but I know it's mm -hmm. part of your story. You you're on Long Island, and you're the only person of color that you pretty much know. Not many. And then you yeah. mentioned that you're the the only maybe one of two in your in your school when you get to West Virginia, does yeah. does race play into your story at all? It doesn't. Um, su surprisingly, it doesn't. Uh, it's it's funny because I, I remember it now, and it wasn't it wasn't a big deal, but at the time it was like you know, oh my god, you know, do, do we offend you? So you know, I'm I'm in West Virginia, you know, I'm I'm in and not you know further south you know i'm in northern part of west virginia which is pretty liberal and um this is when uh before i joined the football team and stuff like that and there was an incident where a couple football players were um they had went across the river and was driving around with uh with confederate flags excuse me on their on their truck and um you know, not harming anybody, not calling anybody an N word or anything like that. They were just driving around. They were just being kids. Yeah. And the head coach, uh, Thomas Selly, that's his name. He's a cool guy. I, I, I loved him to death. He was a cool dude. Um, he came up to me. He was like, Hey, are, are you okay? Or, you know, are you offended? And I'm like, For what? <laughs> I was like, they, I was like uh, Well, you know, they're, they're, they're these kids, you know, they're rednecks. So I, I said, it doesn't bother me like that. that you know, they, they weren't they weren't chasing after me in the backwoods or they were trying to catch me. Right. You know, they were just you know, doing what they were doing. He goes, okay, well, I just wanted to make sure because you know you're only, you're only black guy here. I was like, <laughs> wow. it doesn't bother. I said, that. I said, I, I, said, I didn't pay. I didn't even hear about it until you said something to me uh, about it. But it's it, it's never been 
like I said, it's, it's, it's the way I carry myself. You know, my, my mom, uh, and I, I mention her a lot because uh, uh, she, she was my world. She actually passed away this past November. Oh. Um, but she, you know, she, she told me one time because she was watching, uh, she was keeping my nephew and she, uh, he was going to Indian Creek. And, you know, she was like, I don't understand how you went four years in a school where you were the only black male and never got called out your name. No one ever called you, a, a, you know, a nigger or anything like that. But yet your nephew, who is uh, mixed, went to Indian Creek and got called every other name under the book. Huh. So it doesn't make any sense to me. And I say, well, you told me. It's the way I carry myself. I demanded respect. You know, it didn't matter who it was from or anything like that. It's I carried myself to kind of don't try me, huh. you know. And then, you know, it, and it also, too, did kind of help, too, that everybody knew our last name and knew my brothers and everything like that. So it was like, you know, if you say something stupid to him, guess who you're going to deal with? You're dealing with, you know, <laughs> his brothers. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was just, it never played a factor with me. And, and, and I can say that I'm very fortunate because uh, I've known people like, like my nephew or like other people that I've talked to who, you know, that's played a factor in their life. But with me again, it's just been the way I carry and no one, no one has said anything to my face, at least, you know, maybe behind my back, but to my face, uh, never. All right. So let's get into, onto the sophomore, junior and senior year in, in high school. You're wrestling. Um, I, I'm hoping you at least made it. You had a chance to try to make it back to the state tournament, right? Yeah. Uh, my sophomore year was kind of a bust. Um, there was just a lot of things going on uh, with me grade wise. Um and everything, I, I, I was still on the team up until uh, grades came out again, and then I, I, I kind of fell off. Um, our assistant coach, um, Patrick uh, Klee, um, he was, I was really, really close to him. A lot of the guys were, uh, ended up killing himself. Wow. Um, that was a big blow um, just because I've never had anybody that – be that close to me, like, you know, my, my grandmother and everything like that. I, you know, when I was little, they passed and stuff, but not someone who I saw every day, not someone who interacted with me um, and not someone who cared that much outside of my family. And that was just a really big blow to a lot of us. And, um, you know, he was kind of, he was kind of, at the time, he was kind of the second head coach. Uh, you know, the head coach at the time um, had his good kids that, you know, his kids that he he's had for, you know, four years, four or three years. And, you know, here comes, you know, the younger guys who, you know, are trying to find their way into the fold. And it's just, uh, you know, he was just kind of like the second head coach and kind of really kind of, you know, mentored us and, and, and everything like that. So, you know, when, when he killed himself, it was, it was a really, really, really big blow to us um, and the team and everything like that. So, and it sounds like it affected it, it affected your. I'm not just saying your performance on the mat, but your your grades and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, and it was just, um, you know, I, 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 he, he, he was, he was that one of a kind coach that would take the shirt off his back, uh, would give you his house if he could, just you know, take care of you. Um, you know, he introduced us to his uh, girlfriend and her kids and. Actually, we ended up going over there, hanging out with them and stuff like that. And he was going to marry this woman. And he just took his life. And that was just a really, really big, big shock to, to all of us. And, uh, you know, we just, you know, when we heard it, for me, uh, I've, I've driven in the car with him several times. Uh, so when I heard he had passed, I was like, you got into a wreck. I was like, I know how you drive. And I was just like, damn it, you know, you drove too fast. But then when I heard he killed himself, it was like, that's not the way. That's, 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 that's not, that's not how we were, you know, that's not how he was supposed to go out. Wow. And, um, and, and, and the crazy part about that was, was uh, our assistant, the assistant coach, Jeff Miller, volunteer firefighter, got the call. Oh, wow. And wow. When they called, they knew, he said, that address sounds familiar. And when he got to the house, he said, I know that guy. And um, that was just really, really hard on him. Um, and it was hard on us. And it really was. And it was just uh, just, just crazy. And uh, 
on a, on a side note, uh, kind of a spooky uh, thing. Um, the night it happened, um, like I said, I didn't know, I didn't know about it until the next morning, but the night it happened, I kind of woke up in the middle of the night and um, I saw something walk across my room. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever, whatever. And I got up that morning and I asked my mom, I said, mom, I said, were you in my room last night? And she's like, no, I asked my brother, so were you in the room? They said, no. I said, okay, went to school, heard that news. And, you know, and I'm with my, with one of my teammates and friends and we're talking and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, I think he, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a spiritual, I'm a spiritual person, but I'm not into ghosts and stuff like that. I said, I think he walked and was looking over me. Huh. And I was just like, you know, I, I was, I was kind of freaked, but at the same time, I was like, dude, that, like that's, that's Pat, that's, that's coach, you know, checking over us to make sure, you know, Hey, you're, you're good. You're okay. You're okay. You're good. Wow. But, wow. But, but yeah, that, that, that was a devastating blow that, that year. And it was, it wasn't a good year. Uh, my junior year um, was another kind of was, I was, I was on it. I was on it, uh, winning, uh, winning tournaments, stuff like that. And middle of December, actually, no, it was, it was beginning of January. I quit. Huh. I I just said, I said to myself, and I, and I hope no one kind of <laughs> quits wrestling because of what, what I'm about to say, but it was like, you know, I said to myself, I said, you know, why am I doing this? I said, why am I putting my body through this? Um, you know, why am I putting my body this for a metal or for a piece of plastic? I said, what? This is, it makes no sense. And, uh, and I quit. And, uh, both my coaches, uh, Coach Lesho and Coach uh, Larky, they're like, dude, you're on a roll. Like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why are you quitting? And I just said, I, I just said, I just, I've been doing this for, you know, since, you know, since eighth grade. It was my junior year. I was like, I just, it's, I'm not into it. So, you know, they, they, they let me quit uh, very reluctantly. Um, and then um, Jamie called me. He said, hey, I said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm, I'm all right. But like, I kind of knew what the call was. I was like, but I'm not coming back. I'm, I'm all right, but I'm not coming back. And um, he said, hey, I put you in the AC tournament. I go, well, I'm not wrestling in it. So you can look there. He goes, no, no, just listen. He goes, I put you in to see where they would see Jack just because. And he goes, you know, they put you at sixth place. Oh. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. He goes, do me a favor. He goes, come back, wrestle that tournament. After that, you can quit. Wrestle that one tournament. And if you don't have the passion and you don't want to wrestle, I will leave you alone. And I, I, I'm a person, and I respect the hell of Jamie. I love him to death. And I said, okay. So I came back, practiced for, practiced for a week. And then uh, the next week was OVCs. And I came back, and the fire just lit back. Uh. And it was like, you know, I, I ended up not placing, uh, but I was like, let's go. And <laughs> so I thought you were going to say you won the whole thing or something. That lit the fire. So you didn't even place, but your I, coach was smart enough to know that maybe you just needed to get out there and, exactly. you know, step back on the mat and and, re, and re, fall in love with the sport again or something. Yeah, I, I, I wish I wish I can say I went back out there, beat up everybody, to, you know, pinned everybody all the way to the finals. Yeah. But uh, no, I was just like, let's go, you know. And it was states. It was like, you know, let's 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 get there. And you know, I, I had the passion, I had the fire, and you know, and he he was just on me. And you know, I I I, I kind of got. We were in kind of like an impasse a little bit. Um, with the team in general, and um, we had a uh, we had a wrestler from uh, Burgerstown who came to uh, Madonna. Burgerstown, PA came from Madonna. His name is Brad Nicka. Um, really cool dude. Really good wrestler. Um, he, I mean, he was he. If there was a picture of a perfect wrestler that had the look, Brad had the look hand <laughs> down, and um, that was kind of his best shot for a state title was Brad um, and stuff. So, uh, you know, he kind of put all of his eggs with Brad. And like I said, going back with Patrick with being kind of the second head coach, right. the rest of us were kind of lost. Uh, so, you know, uh, the team kind of chose me, uh, the shy person who didn't like speaking to anybody. Hey, go talk to coach and tell him how we all feel. <laughs> and I was like, 
I just got back on the TV. Well, why me? And it was like, no, like he'll listen to you and he'll, you know, he'll, he, he won't, he won't yell at you. Maybe because I'm black. I don't know <laughs> what it might be, but it was like, he won't say anything. Like, you know, he'll talk to you, but yes, the rest of us won't. So I was like, all right. So I went up to him, you know, uh, right after the OVC tournament. I said, Hey, I said, the guys feel like, you know, you're all about Brad. I said, you know, the rest of us kind of feel like we're, we're, you know, just here. And, you know, and we talked, uh, we talked for about a good, I think like 30 minutes. And he was like, you know, thanks for coming and telling me. He goes, cause you're right. That's, you know, he goes, I didn't realize I was doing it until someone said I was doing it. And, you know, that's where we kind of really bond um, just the closeness and respect that we had, that I had for him, the admiration I had for him and stuff. And so, you know, um, you, it sounds year, like your it sounds like your team, even though you had you had just got back, like you said, they looked at you like a leader, the silent leader. Sometimes yeah. are the best leaders, right? Yeah. You and know, they I said would, you get out there and you do this. I don't think they were even throwing you under the bus. I think they were just <laughs> they knew they knew what you were capable of. Yeah, and you know, and that's just something that I I just never, I you know, I was just like, why me? Like you know, I'm you know, in, in my own head, I'm this short person who doesn't say anything, who doesn't try to rattle anything and less provoked. <laughs> but, you know, they just, they just was like, go, go, go talk with him and go, you know, say that. And I'm just like, okay. And I went with him. I talked with him. We had a good talk. He kind of refocused um, as a coach. I, I kind of refocused as a wrestler, you know, and um, we, uh, we went rolling during the season. Uh, ended up uh, going to regionals, uh, taking, third, um, qualifying for state, and uh, went to state, um, made it to the blood round, I do believe, and just, uh, again, could, just couldn't make it, uh, couldn't make it the place. But, um, you know, it was it was an experience. And um, I, I, looking back, I kind of wish I didn't take that week off, but I needed that week yeah. to miss it. I needed that week to kind of refocus. And um, kind of going through a lot, uh, too, uh, because that's the year I came out, uh, okay. my junior year. Uh, so um, I kind of had to – I'd known since a young age who I was and everything. Uh, I knew I was gay, but I knew it wasn't accepted. So I kind of kept it to myself. You know, I, I, I did dated the girl thing and everything like that and all that stuff, um, and I just kept it to myself. And – I could say it in my head, but I never said it out loud. And I never said it, you know, to anybody else or even my, or even looked in the mirror and even said it. And um, there was just a lot of stuff going on that year um, with that. So, you know, so. Um, <laughs> who, who did you, who did you talk to first about it? Was it your mom? Was it, who, who? Nah, uh, it was actually my friend, Katie. Uh, I talked to her about it first. Um Again, me being a shy kid uh, and my friend Katie being the uh, direct TV satellite, I thought if I told her, it would project out everywhere. And she was, she kept, she kept that secret better than anything that I've ever told her. So, <laughs> then, so you wanted her to tell other people because you didn't want to have to. Is that right? Yeah. yeah I, I, I kind of knew if, you know, and I kind of knew if I, if I told, <laughs> and she might cuss me out for this. But I knew if I told the gossip queen, gossip would spread. Right. And, you know, and I would be able to kind of control it or confront it as I wanted to. Uh, but it, it, you know, she just kind of kept it to herself. And, you know, she was, she was just really, I think she really appreciated the fact that she was the first person that I ever spoke that to. And so, you know, um, you know, she, she kept a secret, you know, and then there was just, times where I could have said something and I didn't, but uh, it was in the middle of the wrestling season, actually. And we had, uh, I think it was Sadie Hawkins or some winter form role dance or whatever like that. And I was actually dating a girl at the time. <laughs> Funny story. And um, I had told Katie, but then I started telling people here and there. And uh, it started to spread. It started to spread around. And so, uh, at the end of the dance, actually, the girl I was dating, we weren't going, we weren't, we didn't go, excuse me, we didn't go to the dance together. We went with friends. And by the end of the dance, uh, she came up to me and she was like, so um, can we talk? And I was like, yeah, what's, what's up? 
And she's like, so I hear that you're gay. And I was <laughs> like, yeah. He was like, oh, okay, well, does this mean we're still dating? I said, no. Nah. <laughs> I think it's over now uh, and stuff. And, um, you know, it spread around and everything. And um, I actually ended up having a party at my house later that night. And um, a lot of my friends found out that night in my own house. And it was just like, you know, everybody was shocked and taken back. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, but you're black. It wasn't, so, it wasn't so much like you're straight or, you know, you act a certain way. It's like, well, you're black, Carlin. Uh, I don't, that's not what I see on TV as representation of a gay man. Yeah. 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 And, Stereotypes again. Right? Yeah. It's not supposed to be that way. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, it was just kind of like, all right, well, you know, and everybody was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Like, okay, that's fine. And, um, one of the funnier stories uh, that I heard was um, my friend Paul, uh, who was on a wrestling team with me. We were we wrestled. Me and him were the only two freshmen on the team uh, when we both started. And uh, he went home, and the way his mom tells the story is so funny. And she was like, you know, Paul came home and it was like, Mom, I actually, actually no, she, you know, she she was like, uh, you know, I saw something was wrong on his face. She said, Paul, what's wrong? He was like, Mom, uh, Carlin just told us he was gay. And she was like, well, okay, um, how do you feel? And he was like, well, I don't know. He's still Carlin, but he's gay. And she was like, well, has anything changed? <laughs> him? And he was like, and she, no. And he goes, is he the same person he was before he told you? Yeah. Well, then there's your answer. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't changed. This is a part of him. It's not him. You know, he's not you know, wearing the high heel shoes and having the purses. It's just who he loves. So accept him because he's still your friend. And, you know, and it was just like, you know, like I had a lot of people apologize to me. You know, like I said something about gay people and I want to say I'm sorry. And I was like, did you say I should be on that? You, like some people were like, you know, they should put all gay people on the island and blow it up. I was like, did you say, Carlin, you should be on that island and blow it up? No. Well, then you didn't offend me. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person you can have your opinion about whatever, as long as you show me respect. You know, I don't, if you hate gay people, cool. But if you like me, then we're cool then. You know, if, if you hate black people, but you like me, cool. You know, I, I, I really don't, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has their likes and dislikes. And it's something that I've always, uh, always been, is just, you know, you can have your opinion. I you know the same way my mom let me have my opinion. But as long as you treat me with respect and as long as you, you know, we're cool, and you can say, you can say whatever you want to say, but it's not going to bother me because as long as you don't direct it toward me, then we're cool. So this was, this was what, late 90s, early 2000? This was 99. This was 99, 2000. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I, you you're making everything sound so easy because nothing was easy in those times they, they weren't right yeah. i love the story i love the way it ended up and i love your friends your support group i love what what your friend's mom said mm. i love that part of the story but i want to make sure everybody listening to this knows that that's not <laughs> that's not how society was looking at this back then it it, it wasn't and i remember Ah, I can't remember when it was. I think it was like 99, maybe 2000. I remember sitting back and watching uh, C-SPAN because, you know, I, I randomly watched C-SPAN and there was like a LGBT rally and they had this gay football player on, uh, you know, this this uh, white gay f football player uh, speaking at this rally. And, you know, and he was talking about his teammates and everything like that. And I'm just like, you know, wow, okay, that's that's cool, but that's not me. You know, that's, I can't, I can't relate to that person. I hear a story, but that's not representation of me. And it kind of like, you know, was kind of like, well, there's more than just him. There's a ton of athletes out there yeah. who, you know, are going through the bad and going through the good. And I just, I, I kind of, I kind of just sat back and was like, you know, they they should do their research a little bit more 
and that's not you know that's not the stereotype that you know it's only white men who are gay it's black men it's latino men it's indian men and so it was just really kind of like you know i kind of sat back and watched it and i kind of had a little bit a little bit of resentment toward it i was like you know that's that's there's there's a lot more out there than just him and but you're picking him because he's the the poster boy so to speak of it but um i'm lucky i'm very very lucky um i i've had friends who've had horror stories um actually not too long ago uh probably about three or four years ago i got a call from my friend out in san francisco uh roger uh brigham who's an ohio native about a trans um trans boy getting bullied off the wrestling team down around cincinnati huh. um it was very hush hush. The, the the parent didn't want you know to make a big deal out of it or anything like that. Um, and the person had a had a passion for wrestling and wanted to do it um, and stuff like that. But you know the the coach found out the person was trans and then told the whole team and the team just went after them. Um, you know verbally. I don't know if there was any physical abuse, but um, he, uh, he he put me in the email with him and he said, you know, this is. Carlin Yetz, he's up in Columbus. You know, if you have, you know, anything you, you know, need, uh, he's there for you. And nothing really came of it, but it's like, you know, you should be protecting kids. You shouldn't be, you know, all, you know, pitting everybody's business out there like that and stuff. And then that just really kind of stuck under my crawl that, you know, years after I came out, uh, you had this trans kid who is, you know, being bullied off the wrestling team. It's especially especially because the wrestling doesn't have big numbers all the time. And it's like you have somebody who wants to prove themselves on the mat and here you are doing that. And you know, like I said, on the and on the flip side, in 2099, I have my coach, my teammates, my school embracing me and huddling around me and protecting me. Yeah. You know, because they all know who I am and my character. It's just I happen to go against a lot of their personal beliefs but at the same time they know me they know the person i am and if they can see the person i am their beliefs can be pushed to the side because i'm not trying to date them or i'm not trying to hit on them or anything like that uh so it's like you know that's still carlin there it's just he likes men yeah. you know so that that you know it, it it was never a difficult road for me. I even had friends who was like, yeah, we'll, we'll protect you. And what messes with you tell us? And I'm like, I can handle myself, guys. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not this, you know, small person. But again, it was, you know, it was another point of the community rallying around me and protecting me and letting me be myself without any question, you know, because they knew me. And it was just, uh, that's, that's kind of what made, my years at Madonna, that much more better. Was like, you know, they, if, if there was any real Christians, they were. Because they practiced what they preached and they made sure to love me, whether in their eyes I was a sinner or whatever, they still said, that's still Carlin, that's our guy, you know, let's protect them. And so that, that was just, that, that's what made those years just phenomenal. That's amazing. I mean, it, again, I don't want to. I don't want to kill the point here. Mm -hmm. The point is your story, but to just to know how rare that is, and and and, yeah. and maybe, maybe you know what? Maybe it's me seeing that the wrong story, getting the wrong story from mm -hmm. whatever the news or social media or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, the poster boy, like what you said, <laughs> and not being aware, like I should be. But to hear that, it just gives me hope. I mean. We have a saying: wrestling is for everybody. Yep. You you you're big, and 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 maybe a little overweight and kind of dopey. You're the heavyweight. Yep. <laughs> you're little. You got to for everybody. Yeah, you're scrawny, and you probably play. Who knows? Back in my day, too much video games or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and it, but you're you're the lightweight. You're you know yep. you're. But guess what? And oh, by the way, white, black, gay, straight. It's a team. It's for everybody. Exactly. And exactly. this team comes together and they, like you said, they embrace it. What a perfect story. What a perfect analogy uh, of, of what re really a wrestling team's all about. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it was something that, like I said, wasn't, wasn't shy about. Uh, 
It wasn't something that I flaunted in everybody's face. Hey, my name's Carlin. I'm gay. You know, <laughs> like that. It was, hey, Carlin's gay. He's a wrestler. Don't fuck with him. You know, I, it, it, it was, you know, kind of kind of in, in that sense. And I mean, you know, um, you know, getting on the mat, wrestling guys, you know, it, it's 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 not a it's not a sexual thing. You know, I, I've had some people talk to me and go, oh, my God, you're a wrestler. Oh, is, it, is that turning you on? I go, no, it doesn't. I'm there to kick someone's ass, win the fucking match. If they want to talk to me after the match, cool. But until then, right. I'm out there to win. And um, that's just, uh, you know, I've. That's the mentality that I have about wrestling. It's, it's never been going down that road of, of, of making it sexualized and stuff like that and everything. But, um, but yeah, but um, like I said, just everybody embraced me. Um, you know, the coaches found out, the teammates found out, and it was, you know, you're Carlin, dude. Like, cool. Yeah. And, you know, and go, going into my senior year, um, I actually started I, – I started football at uh, – 2.30, and um, we wrestled the first tournament, and I wrestled 2.15, and um, I got beat, <laughs> not just beat, I got choked out, I literally, huh. I literally passed out huh. by um, a guy named Nick Busick, who, uh, if the name sounds familiar, uh, his dad is actually a former professional wrestler, uh, Big Bully Busick. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. And, and they're just, and Nick was just... <laughs> <laughs> Nick was Nick was the miniature for, uh, version of his father, and uh, he put me in a cradle so tight it cut off blood to my brain, and I literally just passed out. Wow! And I and I like I laid there and I jumped up. I said, "Okay, let's go." My my, my coach was like, "The match is over." <laughs> he goes, "You passed out." I was like, "Oh!" And then I was like, "All right." And ended up taking third that tournament, and my coach. Uh, Coach Lesho came to me. He goes, dude, he goes, what are you doing? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, there is nobody at 171. He goes, you should not be up here with these big guys. He goes, go. And I never cut weight. I never had to cut weight. Wherever I, wherever I weighed at, I wrestled, um, you know, just hard practicing, everything like that. I never really had to, like, watch my diet and cut weight. He goes, you know, get down. To, there's nobody at 71. 71 is yours for the taking if you get down there. I was like, oh, but I got to cut weight. And he goes, just, he goes, trust me. So I said, okay. So I cut out the pop. I cut out the salt. I, I kind of, you know, did it the right way. When back back then, everybody was wearing the garbage bags. And stuff like that. I think, um, I think actually the year before my senior year, uh, I think it was like a Michigan wrestler or somebody from up north died because they were in uh, a wrestling room that was super hot. They had the garbage bags on, the sauna suit on. And they ended up cooking their own liver. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, weight cutting back then was, you know, the wild, wild west. But, you know, I ate right. I cut out the bad stuff and everything like that. And I ended up by – no, actually, the that tournament was in November, I think. By middle of December, I hit 71. So I went from 230, the start of football season, all the way to 171, huh. doing it the right way and cutting weight the right way. And 171 was mine. Uh, you know, I, I, I ran through a um, couple tournaments uh, and stuff like that. My movement was quicker. Uh, I I was a defensive wrestler. I hated shooting. Hated shooting with a passion. And my coach would always go, why don't you shoot? You have a good shot in practice. Ah, I'm a defensive wrestler. I, you know, I, I, can, I can wait for someone to come at me. You know, I can look like I'm doing something, but I'm a defensive wrestler. Uh -huh. And um, I was just running through people. And... Um, we got to the OVACs, and I was seated, I believe, fourth in the OVACs. And uh, our crosstown rival was We're High. Uh, that was the school. So we were We're Madonna. They were We're High. Um, and so um, I ended up meeting second round uh, my uh, the crosstown rival, a uh, long lengthy kid at 71. And uh, he, uh, the match was, I mean, it was a back and forth match and we were tied going into the third or like the last, no, we were tied going like the last 20 seconds and he caught me in a half and I was a very good bridger and I knew bridge on my head and everything like that, you know, run, I, I could 
bridge and flip straight over. That's just how flexible I, I, I am. And right, it was like one second left. And right when I went to, no, I think it was, I can't remember. I'm getting old. <laughs> right, right when I went to bridge, on the top of my head, the ref called the pin with one second left. And like, I lost my mind. I cussed out the official. I cussed out the head table. I lost my mind because I was like, dude, there's no way he can pin me. Like, there's no way. And um, I had a, a couple of choice of words. <laughs> Some other people. I, I mean, I, I lost my mind. And that was totally out of character of me. But uh, one, one of my goals for that season was not to get pinned. And he was the only one who pinned me that season. And I was just just losing it. And I, I went I went back on the mat, uh, wrestled a kid from uh, Lindsay uh, High School in West Virginia. And I was an asshole. I was a cool asshole. And I didn't mean to be. Uh, but he caught the brunt of, of just a lot of just built up aggression. And the coach from Lindsay, uh, funny story, um, when I went to go shake his hand, he kind of pulled me in. He said, hey, he goes, you know how you were your freshman year, and that's a freshman. And you remember when our our senior had you and how much he treated you with respect. And you know, at the time I was like, ah, oh, what the fuck ever. And and now and I look back and I look back on it a couple years afterwards, and I was like, that was wrong of me to do. That was really wrong of me to do. And funny story. So going back to the my freshman year, wrestling the Lindsay guy who I'm all of five seven you know, kind of a chubby 89, and he's cut, built 89, six feet, you know, eight inches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably going to college play football somewhere. He literally took the shot. Again, I'm a defensive wrestler. He he took the shot, picked me up, sat me down on both shoulders, <laughs> picked me right back up, stuck me on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my coach was like, at least he was nice about it. Like, you know, he could have took it out and beat you up, but he tapped you. Boop, there you go. And, um, you know, I, 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 I thought about that a couple years later, and I was like, you know, that, that was really that was really shit thing for me to do. And, and you know, and, that's, and I'm very, very big on sportsmanship. And I got to tell all my kids, you know, it doesn't matter how you're feeling or what the last match was, you know, take it out on them, but don't take it out on them to be an asshole. You know, take it out on them to, you know, win the match. And, um, you know, that, that was something that always stuck with me. Uh, that was just a, a teaching moment. Yeah. But um, I ended up um, letting my head get the best of me and not placing at OVACs that year um, and stuff. So uh, going on, um, our last um, – actually, going back to the beginning of that season, um, we actually uh, – so we wrestled Lindsley. That was our first dual meet. Okay. And, and my coach – uh, Coach Lesho had never won a duel me in his career. I think he's been coaching since, uh, I want to say maybe mid-90s or something like that. He was an 80s graduate, uh, late 80s graduate. Um, he never won a duel me. Huh. Uh, and that was one of my goals that year, was to win him his first duel me. And so we're wrestling, uh, wrestling Lindsay, Lindsay Cadets. And uh, I recruited my ass off. I got friends to come out. I was like, dude, you guys got to come out and wrestle. You know, it's our senior year. You got to do something. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll come on and wrestle. And um, we put a team together. Me and my friend Paul, we, we got our friends on there. We had some freshmen and some of the lower class people, lower classmen who were on the team and stuff like that. And we just, we recruited our asses off. And, you know, we got there. Um, didn't know how we were going to do. We tied it up with Lindsay. It came down to the last match. And my friend Ian, uh, he just – no, he is not athletic at all. No athletic, doesn't have a built whatsoever. And he pinned the kid, and we lost our minds. And I, <laughs> and I remember going to coach, and I said, that's for you. That's for you. That's your first ever win. And that, that like, it's, it, it, it was awesome. And, and, and that was kind of – what my, my goal my senior year wasn't so much about me winning. At uh, the beginning of the year, uh, my coach had told us, he said – how people are going to remember you, it's nice to have your name up on the wall, state titles, you know, placing, stuff like that. He goes, but the way people are going to remember you is by what you do. 
what you show them. He goes, you know, if someone shows you a move, you're going to pass that on to someone and go, hey, this guy named Carlin Yet showed me this move. Let me show it to you. That's how your name lives on. You know, yeah, people are going to always come into a room and see you, but your name's going to get passed on by which you give back to the sport. Yeah, the impression that you make. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's something that stuck with me. And my senior year, like I said, it wasn't about me winning state. It wasn't about me, you know, doing things. It was just me making sure what we built kept going. And um, like I said, just a whole different mindset from my junior year to my senior year yeah. um, and stuff. But that was just one thing that we just kind of just, you know, that was my focus was that. And um, like I said, we won him his first dual meet, um, you know, and everything like that. Uh, we won him his first city championships, going back to uh, our city rival, him beating me in the OVACs. We get, uh, it's a week before uh, regionals, uh -huh. and we have a dual meet against them. We have a dual meet against We're High, and then our, also our rival, uh, Willing Central, was the, which was the Catholic school in Willing, West Virginia. Uh, they were our rival, too. Um, and um, we, it came up to a 171 weight class, and he was sick. Ah. <laughs> And it's well played, you know, he had the win over me. So going into regionals, he would be seated above me, you know, and, you know, we, we all kind of, you know, was like, oh, yeah, fucking punk. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll see yes, yet yeah, regionals. All right. So, you know, so uh, we, we, we win the duel and everything like that. Uh, we go into regionals. Um, and this is back when uh, it was stacked. It I mean, 71 was tough. Um just, you know, just kids from Oak Glen, uh, kids from down south. You know, I mean, it was it was, it was was a really tough weight class. And I mean, Oak Glen, back then, uh, Oak Glen, West Virginia, they they had, they are what Dublin Kaufman is now. Okay. That's what Oak Glen was. They just, they had, they were turning out kids. They had the youth program going back when, you know, it really wasn't big to have one. And they were just turning kids out all the time. Um, and so we... Um, we got there. Uh, me and him actually ended up going for third and fourth, and uh, I had it. I, I, this is the only time I ever shot. <laughs> I said, well, take down, take down, take down, take down, take down. And come third period, I was up, and it was like 20 seconds, 20, 10, 20 seconds, 11 o'clock, and I just started circling. I started circling. I didn't even take a shot. I just started circling. And the ref hit me for stalling. And I remember looking at the ref, and I said, I won the match already. I don't care. I know where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh we went down uh you know i took third he took fourth uh went to state that year um took ended up taking fifth okay uh that year uh which was really nice to, to get on the podium finally and everything um and stuff and that was my high school career it was it was really fun um like it's a lot of ups and downs but it, it, it you know created it, it created the person i am today doing that and um, it was just really kind of one 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 thing one thing my my coach James Lesho um, the one thing he really liked about me he hated me not shooting but the one thing he liked about me and it's one thing I'm kind of trying to teach my kids and I've taught my kids in the past is when you step off the mat you should be able to tell me everything that you, that went wrong and I was such a student of the game. After any match, he goes, what did you win, – a win or loss, what did you do wrong? This, 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 and this, and this. He's like, cool, good talk. Because <laughs> I was a student of the game. And, you know, and you know, I remember he, we were we was talking with him. And he turned into the assistant and was like, that's the thing I like about Carlin. He can tell me what he did wrong, and I don't have to say anything to him. And, you know, and, then, and, that's, and that's just, you know, when I heard him say that, it was like, everybody else doesn't do that? Why you're in the match? You should know, you know, and that's something. Even now with the kids, I wrestle, I coach now. It's like, tell me what you did. Don't get mad and throw stuff and be mad. You know, tell me what you did wrong and stuff like that. So you know, that's that's what kind of really he he really he he doesn't know this, but he really shaped me uh, to be the man that I am today. Uh, you know, we butt heads a couple of times and stuff like that, but he he was like he was like the second father to me, and um, I, I love him to death and would do anything for that man. Well, you had. So you have oppor ample opportunity to 
to have that impression on on your athletes now. In fact, you know, we were just at the girls' state tournament. So you've yeah. got well, you had two, right, Rebecca mm -hmm. and and, and uh, right, Adamar. Adamar. So I would imagine that you take that same philosophy with them. They come off the mat, and and I don't mean any disrespect to them at oh. all. But there's things that they had to learn or do wrong, right? That that um, that that they're learning the sport from you, basically, is what is what you're giving. Yeah, them Re to. Rebecca's been in it since she was a freshman. Adamar, she was in uh, Whetstone Wrestling Club with Tom Jones. Okay, who's now, who's now an assistant with me at the cells, and um, girls get it. <laughs> That's girls get it. Boys struggle with it. Girls get it, and them two. There was, they knew what they did. I didn't have to sit there, you know, I would give them pointers on maybe this is what you should do, but it was like, hey, I tried this, it didn't work. I tried to throw her, I slipped out. You know, I don't, you know, it, it was never really a long conversation. I mean, I'm a big fan of video. Um, I know you kind of saw me running around with the yeah. tripod and the iPad, and I'm running around. And um, that I kind of learned in my youth years coaching youth wrestling that you need to sit and go over exactly what happened because people's minds are all over the place. Wrestling's mental. They're freaking out, whatever like this. There's this one kid I coached um, named Evan at uh, when I was at Dodge. And in practice, he was shots, taking kids down, everything. He got into when we were at tournaments. It was, it was what I call the etch sketch effect. You draw a nice picture and then you would shake it it all disappeared. And he was just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, you know, he would be mad and upset and, you know, he's young and he's like, I don't get why it's not working. It works in practice, but it doesn't work here. And I literally sat down with him, showed him the video and he was like, oh, that's it? I said, yeah, he'd go out there, beat, beat, beat. And he got it. And it's all because of video. And like I said, mostly with, you know, the girls with Rebecca and them, I, you know, it was coach, let me see my, let me see my match. Let me see the video. You know, I'd sit with them. This looked good. This needs to change, whatever like that. Cool. I felt, you know, or they would go, you know, I felt that, that I couldn't do that, but I tried it and I didn't hit it. And it was like, you know, it wasn't a whole big, you did this wrong. You need to do this, blah, blah, blah. It was cool. You get it. I get it. Let's fix it in the next match. Let's go. So much more receptive. So yeah. much more receptive. Oh, my God. I can't even. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't do a separate podcast about girls wrestling versus boys wrestling because, <laughs> you know, you just see it, you know, being a being on the sidelines of being a fan. Um and the love and the and the respect for the sport and and the the oh, growth. I mean, Adamar yes. grew tremendously this year in the sport. For, and Rebecca, for, I mean, incredible, incredibly yeah, well for, since her freshman year, like what you said. For Adamar, for a person who took seven years off, didn't wrestle for seven years, and you know when I asked her, you know, and I mean we we stalked her. I told Rebecca, I said, find out her homeroom, stalk her get her in this room. And, you know, she finally came back, you know, with COVID, she was worried about a couple of things. And, you know, when we get into the end of the season, I say, you know, why did you decide to wrestle this year? She goes, I wanted to leave my mark. And I was like, wow. But you decided your senior year to do it? Like, come on, come yeah. on. You had four years, but it was like, I wanted to leave my mark. I wanted to put my name up somewhere to where I was remembered. Yeah. And for her to, like I said, I mean, she, when, when I first saw her, when our, our first match, uh, we were at Hamilton Township. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big thrower. I love throwing people, not head and arms, but, you know, uh, seat belts, you know, over-unders, uh, Japanese wizards. I love throwing people. I love sending people out fireman's carries. Um, and she hit a seat belt throw. And I, I was like, this is my girl. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, and I got up and I said, you like, because she didn't do it in practice. She didn't do it at all in practice. And I said, so you're a thrower? She goes, yeah, I love the throw. I was like, here we go. The strap on your seatbelts. Let's go. Yep. And, you know, with Rebecca, you know, Rebecca, she has, I know there's a, I've seen it. I've seen it a couple times. I've seen it in spurts, a mean streak of where she's kind of, she focuses in and it's go time. You know, she, she's friends with everybody. She talks to all the girls and everything like that. And that's good to have. I think that's, I think that's the, that's the big difference between boys and girls wrestling all the girls want to be friends with each other and everything like that. The boys are like, ah, I'm going to kick your ass. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's like Rebecca, she's friends with everybody. She knows everybody, you know, everything like that. But there's times when, you know, she would hone in 
and I'd see it on her face and I'd see that look of like, I'm going to kick your ass. This is mine today. And I see it. And I'm like, why can't I have it all the time? And she's like, oh, you know, it'll come and go. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> it needs to stay. It needs to be all the time. But, you know, uh, they're, they're just two girls who are just, you know, they, they, they have a passion for the sport and they're just awesome. There's awesome to be around and they're, and they're fun. It, it, it's fun. And the one thing I like about girls wrestling, and I talked to a couple of officials about this too, like when you go, everybody's into it. Doesn't matter what school they're from. Doesn't matter what the crowd is in it. Boy, like I was just at um, our um, sectional at, uh, Lick, at um, Licking Valley and like half the time it's quiet unless, you know, Someone has brought a big crowd. Yeah. It's thunderous. So you were there at the state. It's thunderous. Orange is cheering. Shenandoah is cheering. Everybody's just going crazy. You're here. And it's just like, dude, this is, this is, this is like, this is wrestling. This is how wrestling is supposed to be. Yeah. But, you know, th those, those girls, uh, you know, even though we had a small, small contingent, um, which was really nice, the boys came out and cheered them on on the second day, uh, which was really cool. But, you know, girls wrestling is, is starting to grow out the sales and, and, and it's going to be exciting. And, uh, I may or may not be at the helm next year, uh, kind of seeing, trying to decide what I want to do. Uh, but I'm thinking about bringing in some uh, former girl wrestlers uh, that I saw this year to maybe try to head it up and uh, really spearhead it. No, that's good. I mean, that I mean, you, you do bring up a good point. Uh, as that part of the sport grows, we need to see more opportunities for girls to to be at the helm. Yeah, um, I think it's important. I mean, not that guys can't do it it's just it's that there's a certain relation that that girls especially uh ones that have experience wrestling already yeah will be, be able to bring to a program like the sales a historical storied program like the sales yeah. and i'm sure i'm sure they i'm sure you guys want to have state champion female wrestlers it's, as well it's it's coming and, and if and i i think i can say this if rebecca has anything to say about it next year she had a couple injuries this year um, and stuff like that. Um, you know, she was predicted to win it all. And, you know, injuries uh, kind of played there a little bit toward the end. Uh, that's why we kind of pulled back a little bit on uh, on our tournaments with the girls. But if she has anything to say about it, uh, she's coming for that title. She really is. And she, uh, whether she places or not, she will be the first four-time state placer of, of a girl and uh, in the sales history. So that, that, that's an accomplishment uh, on its own, but she wants to be, she wants to be the girl, the black girl on that board full of white guys yeah. Uh, yeah. On, on the board. So uh, she, she, we're, we're definitely going to kind of make it happen. But A lot of Italian white guys for some reason up there too. <laughs> <laughs> Can't figure it out. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know, but you know, but, uh, but yeah, uh, she, she's determined about it. So, how did you how did you come about to 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 join up with the sales? Um, I spoke it into existence. Uh, if anyone ever believes about speaking things into existence, uh, I was coaching at Gahanna Lincoln uh, before um, with Mike Flushi, and um, a kid made me mad one day, and and I just randomly said the I just randomly said I was like, if you guys keep messing with me, I said I'm going to go coach with Colin Palmer over at the sales, and that'll teach you guys. And you know, it was just a joke, and I and I ended up telling the joke to one of my uh, one of my former wrestlers, and um, in the middle of April, uh, he texted me, huh. and he sent me a post. He sent me Colin's post that he was looking for coaches for the sales. So he was like, "Coach, you you said you were you gonna go to sales. Here, here you go." And you know, I really didn't want to leave Gehanna. Um, I Gehanna is they are community. Hands down, uh, there uh, the kids. I, I, I loved all the kids. I loved the stats. Um, e even Coach Flushi, uh, he he made wrestling for me fun when it, when it was getting kind of dark for me um, and not having fun and, and and wanting to not do it anymore. He made it really fun for me. But um, it was kind of my time to go. Uh, we just had some disagreements on some things, and um, I contacted Colin. Uh, we were rivals in, uh, with our youth programs. I coached at Dodge Recreation Center for uh, nine years. And uh, funny story, I actually met Colin before that. Um, there was a Ohio, um, what's the big, uh, the Tournament of Champions. There was yeah. a Tournament of Champions in June, uh, no, in April. And um, I had a parent whose kid got hurt, uh, wrestled at UA, 
had a very, very bad concussion where he had to learn how to read and write and stuff like that um, at, uh, from UA. And uh, he wanted to come and coach at a recreation school because he said the rich kids didn't need help. The inner city kids, you know, need to have a, need to have a chance to. So he came and coached with me. Um, we were going to do, uh, he came and coached me for a couple of years. We were going to do kind of like a, uh, kind of like an open mat before the uh, tournament champions. Um, and she said, hey, I know Colin Palmer. And I was like, okay, whoever that is. And this is when Colin was actually kind of hurt. Um, I think with like a leg injury or something like that. So he was coming in on crutches. But I remember meeting him. I don't know if he remembers meeting me. Huh. But um, we actually met before. And so uh, fast forward, you know, he got uh, Palmer wrestling started. I was getting Dodge wrestling uh, on its way up and everything like that. So we would kind of see each other and stuff like that. And I mean, you know, uh, our kids would, would battle, you know, it, it, it'd be a battle with, with everybody. And, uh, you know, some of my kids, you know, started going to him. Some of his kids started coming to me. So we were kind of trading kids back and forth, you know, kind of trying to solidify whose program was, you know, better and stuff like that. So, you know, I had a, I had a disdain for Colin. I didn't hate him. I had a disdain for him. But anytime we saw each other, hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on, bro? You know, uh, I, I, I tell the story that we we almost got into a fight at the OAC uh, grade school states. Oh, no. Because uh, <laughs> I was coaching a kid. I was coaching one of my kids. One of his kids on the, was, uh, was wrestling one of my kids on the mat. And he was wrestling, uh, and one of his other kids was wrestling behind us. So he was in the chairs behind us. So I'm yelling at my kid coaching, and uh, I, they had an injury time or something like that, and Colin's yelling behind me. I said, dude, if you want to coach, go sit in the chair. He goes, I'll coach anywhere I want to. I said, oh, really? Do you want to you do this right now? <laughs> and so, you know, we kind of got exchanged words. And then you know, I saw him again, and I was like, what's up, Colin? He goes, hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> so, yeah, it was just, you know, just that playful banter that we had. Yep. So, uh, you know, that was kind of our, our, our history. And um, so we went, um, so like I said, he, uh, I hit him up. I said, dude, I said, hey, it's Yetz. Uh, I heard you're looking for coaches. As he want me to send my resume, he goes, I know who the fuck you are. He says, meet me here on Wednesday. I said, okay. He goes, because we're having a team meeting. I said, all right, cool. So uh, it was at BW3s at Easton. And so uh, we get there. I get there. I'm the first one there. Colin's not there yet. Uh, Colin uh, is on Colin Palmer time. <laughs> he says, that's that's uh, CP stands for color people time, uh, but it's Colin Palmer time. <laughs> uh, but he gets there when he gets there, and um, I get there, and I, you know, I'm the only person there, so I'm standing next to the to the I'm standing at the hostess thing, and again, you just feel something behind you. So the door opens, and I'm like, "There's someone behind me, like someone that I know." I turn around, and it's Tom Jones. And so me and Jones have history, too, in youth wrestling. Um, uh, he was at Whetstone Rec. I was at Dodge Rec. We had, had a couple battles. Uh, you know, uh, eventually he shut down um, to kind of focus more on the high school. And then all his kids came to my came, – uh, came to me. And, then, and any kid, anybody who he would get, he'd say, go to Yetz. So, you know, so we had a battles, but we were never, like, bitter enemies. You know, we were always kind of friendly with each other because we were in the Rex. And, you know, uh, not too many kids come out for wrestling in the Rex. So he would always send them to me. And so I turn around, I see him, and I'm like, it's, it's kind of like the Superman meme where everybody's pointing at everybody. Yeah. And it's just like, what are you doing here? <laughs> He's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I'm here for calling. He goes, I'm here for calling too. And he was like, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just like, okay, like, what, what is Colin doing here? Like, all right, he has me here. He has Tom Jones here. Like, What's going on? So, you know, we all kind of sat down and, you know, we're all talking. And I hadn't really made a decision if I was going to go to the sales or not. And so, um, you know, we're talking, we're talking, you know, and he, you know, Tom, you're you've been at Whetstone forever. And, you know, you're a great coach. And we heard great things and blah, 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 blah. And so here I am sitting there like, you know, here's Colin Palmer, you know, Ohio State, Palmer Wrestling. Here's Tom Jones, you know, Whetstone Wrestling, you know, yeah. I don't have a resume, you know, I, I, I coach, uh, and, and, and I, and I say that, and then I'm going to name my resume and they're going to be like, well, you do have one, but in my head, I don't, um, right after I got out of high school, I went to school, Hawaii Pacific university. I coached at Iolani high school. Um, I came back home, coached at, back at Hardy middle with, uh, my former coach, Joe Yanok coached three years at Dublin Kaufman with Bob Stoll. I was the head JV coach. Uh, that's a funny story. Uh, when we get done with that, remind me to tell you that story. Okay. Um, 
coached uh, ball for three years, um, head coach at Eastmore Academy for a year. I took a year off. Uh, my mom's actually the one who got me the job at Dodge Recreation Center. She was cooking down there, and they needed a wrestling coach, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, I'm done. But then I did it and coached there for nine years. Two years I can handle Lincoln, now I'm there. And, um, you know, so I do have a resume. You know, I, I, had, I have some success. I do have state champs and everything like that. But I, I just didn't see myself on their level. And, um, you know, Colin, you know, he, you know, he's talking to me and he's like, dude, he goes, the one thing I like out of everything that I've done, and I, and I can't believe he knew this about me. He goes, the thing that I want, the thing I like about you is how you get with your kids and how you take video of them. And I'm like, how I take video? He goes, yeah. He goes, I see you, you know, with your iPad, same thing. I'm, I, that, that's how I've always been. You know, with my iPad and my stand running around taking video, he goes, I see you sit with your kids and go through video and then see them in their next match and they get it. And I'm like, that's what you know about me? I was like, wow. I was like, that's just, you know, I'm not, you know, I, you got better, bigger and better things to worry about, but you see me working with these kids and, you know, breaking down video. He goes, yeah, he goes, that's what, he goes, that's what we need that's going to make us successful. And I was like, wow, okay. And, um, you know, we had one or two more meetings um, before I made a decision and I kind of figured... And at one of the meetings, um, it was kind of like who was coming, who was coming up, who's this, who's the seventh and eighth graders that are going to be coming in the next couple of years. Right. And I was like, dude, I I coached against that kid, I coached against that kid. And it was like, this is going to be like he's playing in the head, like this is going to be good. And I know I had no other choice but to leave Gahan. I really didn't want to, um, but I was like, you know, this is an opportunity to to really do something. You know, it's me, it's Colin, it's Jones. Uh, uh, Tyler Powers is there. Uh, former rival Collins is there too. It's like, dude, it, it's going to be a badass team, but it's going to be a badass coaching staff. And it was like, wow, this is, this is, this is going to be good. So, um, so yeah. So then um, uh, we had a little meet the team thing. Uh, they introduced everybody. And again, I, I don't live in my own head. I just don't think that I'm that important for people to talk about. But I had uh, I had parents come up to me. He goes, hey, yes, what's going on? I'm like, who the hell are you? And they're like, oh, you know, I wrestled you know, over here. And your kids were kicking my kid's ass and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, great. And um, so uh, one of the parents was like, you know, one thing I want to know is why you guys – why did you guys all decide to come coach with Colin? So um, – Tom gives his speech, you know, he, he's kind of a, he's kind of an honorary to sales wrestler. Cause you know, he wrestled with them. He, you know, went to Whetstone and uh, you know, he knew Marinelli and everybody like that and everything. And so, you know, he has the history, a couple other people say a couple other things and they get to me and I was like, actually, I hate calling. <laughs> I, I said, actually we beat each, we, our kids have beat each other's ass so much. I said, what the hell? And let's see what we can do together. I said, D, look, this is really fun. I said, actually, I don't even like you, to be quite honest. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, it's, it's been a trip, dude. It's been a real cool trip. And Colin's a cool dude. And, I mean, I love his coaching style. Uh, he's just really relaxed in the room. Um, he values everybody's opinion. Um, you know, again, I don't think that I'm on that level in my head. But, um, you know, he, he talks to me, he talks to Jones, he talks to Powers. He wants, you know, everybody's opinion. You know, he, he's, not, he's not the smartest person in the room. And when you have a coach like that, everybody's going to flourish because you see everybody's opinion that's different. Um, like I said, I go over film with kids uh, and stuff like that. I, I'm doing my role. Tom's doing his role. Powers is doing his role. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, I mean, it's all clicking for everybody. And it's just uh, – I, I had fun at Gehanna. But I'm having, I'm having, I'm, I'm, I'm a kid in the candy shop here with all the talent and everything that we're creating and that's coming up and we're getting ready. And one thing that me and Tom kind of got um, assigned to was um, getting the new kids, the first years, the ones who aren't that good yet, getting them to a point to where, okay, hey, we're going to get you guys ready because we, we did a lot of split practices and, um, it's like, okay, we're going to split the practice up. You know, we're going to have new kids and we're going to have the, what at the time they called the elite, the elite seven, uh, do their thing. And eventually we want everybody to mesh. And that's just how it planned out. And it worked perfectly. We got the kids up to speed on how to shoot, how to defense. 
and we just started kind of throwing a little bit at a time into the elite ones. And it was like, okay, they're here. Let's get you here. We got them there. And I mean, we walked and rolled with sectional champions, um, stuff like that. And been sectional champions because of the new kids who stepped up and who really kind of, you know, took it on their own to, you know, I was on the fence about wrestling. I'll do it. But then they got that taste. And it was like, oh boy, wow, let's do this. Sectional champs, CCL champs this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first, first time in uh since 2009. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's an amazing ride. And I still, I, again, I'm like sitting back and watching and go, am I a part of this? Is this, is this reality? And it's, it's, it's such a cool thing. Well, you guys are really building something special there. There's no, <laughs> there's no lie. It's, it's, um, you know, you have, when you have a, a name like Colin Palmer, right. Everybody mm -hmm. just thinks that all of a sudden it's going to be an overnight success. And, yeah. and, um, he's building it the right way. He really yeah. is. And, and, and instilling values in the younger kids and, and you know, building the, a foundation. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. But um, I know he's doing it the right way, and you guys are all all a part of that. It's fun to watch. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and, and it's and it's crazy because we all we all have these relationships with these kids, and over time, you know, we've all learned to to be friends with the kids, but not be to be friendly, but not friends. And to build these relationships and so you know with me and tom being former head coaches it's like we enjoy being the assistant we're not trying to take charge we want to we want to work with the kids you know we're we're getting to do what we want to do that we want to do as head coaches but we had the paperwork and we had all this other stuff that we had to take care of as head coaches and it's like now we're developing you know it's it's, it's, it's kind of it's, it's kind of i don't want to kind of you know throw a little um advertising but it's kind of like ohio state develop here you know, develop at the sales and, you know, we're developing these kids who don't know a lick of wrestling and it's working. And, you know, um, our heavyweight Ray, um, he got hurt last year. Uh, first match ever broke collarbone was set out for the year. And this year was kind of trying to get him back into the groove and, you know, uh, working with him, uh, they give me all the credit. Uh, it's a team effort. They, you know, they go, you know, what, what you did with Ray and him, coming out, I'm like, it's, it's not me, it's the team, it's, you know, everybody, it's, you know, it's, it's Max helping Ray, you know, seeing the potential in Ray, it's, it's everybody helping him, but they want to kind of give me the praise, but I'm like, dude, all I did was just be tough with them, I'd be, I was tough with them, I compared football to wrestling, and let him know, hey, you can do this in football, because you can learn this in wrestling, and, he, you know, it clicked with him, he got it, uh, he got a couple big wins, a uh, couple tournament uh, placing, um, and stuff like that, and you know, he just kind of turned it on. Um, we have a 106 pounder who uh, cross country, he's cross country runner, and the winner he did indoor track, swimming, and wrestling oh. all at the same time. Wow! And um, you know, he was kind of on the fence. I don't know about wrestling, and um, we were at we were we were at sectional actually this weekend. He was on the fence about it, and he was like, ah, but sectional, he got a big win over Waterson. And he was like, let's go, you know, and it was like, I'm doing this next year. Run, let's go. Like, and it's like wrestling, he caught that wrestling bug. So it's, it's really cool. It's really cool to kind of to kind of see the kids develop and, you know, catch that. And it's like, it's go time. Like, like what do I need to do in the off season? You know, what, what do I need to do to get better? What do I want to do to beat Watterson every single time now? You know, it's, it's, they're catching it. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to see. Well, and, yeah, and, and Watterson is building the program too, so it's going to yeah. be fun to watch from the again from the side from the from the bleachers. It's going to be fun to watch that rival, rivalry go. Yeah, and 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 it's and it's 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 really cool to you know it's 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 not fun when you have somebody dominating it all the time. Yeah, it's fun when it goes back and forth and when you can battle out and stuff like that. Like I said, Bishop Reedy ended up taking second. I remember I was I was actually I was we were at CCLs. And I look at the scoreboard, Watterson's ahead. I turn around, Bishop Reedy's ahead, and they just beat Watterson. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Watterson was supposed to, you know, it's supposed to come down to, like, us two. And here, Bishop Reedy ended up taking second and knocking Watterson the third. And it was just like, wow. You know, that, that that's what makes it fun. And uh, uh, and, and funny story about the Bishop Reedy coach, because uh, I, I know him, and he's a really cool guy. And um, I had went to the CCL meeting uh, earlier this year. They have a, a, a meeting before the season before the school scene starts. And he saw me at Gehanna with Flushi and everything like that. And uh, we had our 145 pounder, uh, Chuck Williams wrestle and his kid, they were always pounding it out. 
his 145 panel when, when they met. And so I go behind him. I go, hey, bud, what's up? He goes, why are you here? <laughs> he goes, oh, fuck. He goes, Colin, Colin's just making me mad right now. I know what he's doing. He's like, dude, you're going to have a fucking team just out the ass over the next couple of years. Goes, God damn it. I thought I had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Colin's like, I was like, well, I said, Jones is here too. He goes, from what zone? He was like, oh, come on. He goes, he goes, I'm not giving anybody else a chance. And I was like, oh, I was like, uh, we'll see. You know, I, I didn't know the team at the time, and I was like, oh, we'll see. But uh, but it's been fun, and and even with the guys, um, like we talked earlier, uh, having to come out all over again, um, I really didn't have to. I, I kind of the guys kind of follow me on Instagram, and uh, I'm not shy about posting certain things or something like that when it comes to uh, who I am and what's a part of me, and uh, the guys kind of caught wind of it. Uh, and they were, uh, they were kind of, I, I had said a quote or something like that in the Instagram in the, um, title and, uh, I was at practice and they kept repeating it and it was nothing bad or anything like that, but it was just like, okay, I know you guys saw it. And everybody was just kind of like, cool. All right. Yet's is, yet's is gay. Okay. And, you know, and. You know, everybody was kind of like, if I say something, you know, uh, let me know. And I was like, dude, I was like, if you're going to dish it out, I'm going to take it and I'm going to dish it right back at you. So be prepared. Be ready for it. Uh, you know, because I'm, 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 I'm not the, I'm not some soft person who gets offended by everything. Like, you know, be ready for it. And um, it's, it's funny because I was telling Colin about this. Um, me and Tom were talking about it and he was like, you know, you have to tell Colin about this interview. And I was like, okay. And you know, so... Um, it was actually after CCLs, and I was like, okay. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll tell Colin. And so I was like, right, so Colin, I gotta tell you something. He's like, what, dude? I was like, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna have this, you know, be on this podcast, and, uh, you know, they're gonna talk about my story, and uh, I'm gay. And <laughs> I love Colin to death. The first thing he was like, was like, what was it, like a setup job? Are they trying to like expose you? I said, no, they're not trying to expose me. I said, they just want to tell my story and stuff like that. And he was just like, Oh, okay, dude, because we got your back. I said, he goes, yeah, we're not worried about it. And I was like, well, you know, we could get feedback from the diocese or something like that. He was like, ah, he goes, we got too many kids and too many parents that love you. He goes, if anything happens, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. And I said, I'm not worried about it. I said, you know, I've, I've never been worried about it. Um, my track record speaks for itself um, and everything like that. Um, kids have always stuck up for me. Um, I had one kid threaten another parent um, at a at an Ohio way tournament. Huh. Uh, threatened to beat up this parent who was talking about me uh, and stuff like that. And the dad had to kind of like pull him back, like, "Dude, you're you're 12. You're not going to beat up this adult. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. He's talking about my coach uh, and stuff like that." Um, you know, I, I came out at Dodge um, and everything um, to parents and stuff like that. And um, you know, the feedback I've always gotten has been, you know. My kids love you. I'm not going to take somebody who's positive out of their life and who cares about them for something that doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, so, I mean, and, and apparently I've, I've changed lives. One one parent told me, you know, the word fag and gay ran rampant around her house. And, you know, when they got to me and, you know, I told them I was gay and everything like that, she goes, it stopped immediately. He goes, you know, the, the respect that they have for you changed you know, she thanked me because her house calmed down a lot. Yeah. But it was like, you know, the respect that they have for you, they 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 check their words now. And you know, that's 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 it's it's amazing. It still amazes me, because again, I don't think I'm up here, but it's it's the little things in life that kind of, you know, I'm I'm changing people and kids' lives and I don't even know it. It's it's just an everyday thing. And you know, like I said. From, you know, some kids have, uh, well, one year, uh, my youth program, we raised the money for a kaleidoscope, which is an LGBT um, youth um, place for them to go to. We raised money for them. Uh, we held like, a, we had, a, we held a, uh, a pride night and we kind of dueled each other uh, the first time, second time, uh, more people wanted to be involved in it and everything like that. And the third time we had another team and kids from, you know, all around who wanted to be involved in it. Cause it was cool. Uh, there's one, there's this one picture of our first night that we did it. Uh, the first time that we did it, um, I had these pride shoes and on the bottom, I didn't realize that they were rainbow. 
and I'm sitting in the front and the kids all behind me and we did our logo in our rainbow color and you see the bottom of my shoes. And I was like, wow, that's a really cool pick to see the bottom of my shoes and the kids all around me and stuff like that. And so, I mean, I've, I've, I've always had support um, from everybody. Uh, I'm, an, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wrestling official as well. Uh, so I've always had support of Fred Feeney uh, and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's just really cool um, just to see the wrestling community kind of come around me. Uh, and, and, and one, the, a funny story about that, um, one of my parents overheard one time, uh, they were at a tournament and they heard two parents talking in the concession line. And they were like, hey, the, those kids from Dodge are, are, are good, you know. He goes, I'm thinking about taking my kid there. And the other parent goes, well, you know, he's he's black, right? <laughs> he said, yeah. I, but he goes, I don't care about that. Like, you know, his kids are kidding. He, well, he goes, well, you know, he's also gay, right? He's like, well, if gay black men can teach my kid how to not get his ass kicked. I'm taking him to him. It doesn't matter, you know. And then hearing things like that, you know, we're ch changing hearts and minds. And, it's, you know, it's 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 amazing. It's really, really amazing to, to, to hear and stuff like that. Like I said, I had a kid uh, last night uh, tagging me on Instagram on a photo of somebody who inspires him. And, uh, you know, it, just, it was just, it was out of left field. And, you know, he hit me up and he said, you know, you, you, a lot of things that you said I listened to and it's helping me become the person I am today. And I was like, what did I say? Like, I have no idea what I told you. And, you know, he's just like, you know, you, you taught me a lot of life lessons. And that's going back to my high school coach teaching me those life lessons and stuff like that. And everything comes full circle. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a fun ride. Uh, I don't know how many more years I have in myself to coach because uh, I want my winners back, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just been, been one hell of a ride. And I mean, I've had the support of everybody. Um, anyone who's ever come on my team, I've never had a parent, you know, I've always kind of given the parents, you know, the, the, the discretion, Hey, just to let you know I'm gay, just in case you didn't know I'm black as well, just in case that was a surprise. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, you know, we do things on this team differently. And, you know, and, you know, this, you know, this is a team that accepts everybody. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. One, as one, uh, one kid um, who's graduated now, uh, he wrestled for Westland, Bryson Palmer. He uh, he told me that he before matches he would listen. He had his mom record at, like at the end of practice. I would speak, and I would go on for maybe like ten or twenty minutes of just speaking and you know positives and stuff like that and talking. And he said, you know, my mom recorded you speaking so I can hear it before matches. Huh. And I was like, wow, so that's really cool. And so um, sometimes I would record myself because I would make uh, hype videos for the kids. And I recorded, I said, dude, I said, here's recordings of me recording myself. And he was like, dude, he goes, this is the best thing ever. And it would get him hype. He would hear, he would not listen to music, but listen to my voice, hype him up. And I'm just like, wow, that's, that's crazy. It's just yeah. crazy to be, to be that kind of influencer. Well, my hope is by this, that somebody out there will hear this recording of you and yeah. understand what I said earlier. Wrestling is not only for everybody, but wrestling is family. Yes. And everybody is part of this family. Mm -hmm. And it's important for, for someone that might be struggling with their, their race, their, 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 their gender, their, you know, their sexuality, uh, with depression, with yeah. suicide, whatever, homelessness, <laughs> yeah. um, that you're part of this family. Yep. And, and, that's why I think it's important to get this out. We we went way over time, <laughs> and and I respect I respect your time. Yes. Um, I know there's a lot more to the story still. Yeah. So, what I'll tell you, what I'll just put a bow on it. It goes back to what my takeaway with you is. It goes back to what your mom told you. You're just exuding this <laughs> this what is it? Whatever it is, aura, yeah. personality. Yeah. Uh, confidence and that's why everything around you has gone so well and so keep it up because i see you know i see you you've got uh you've got the respect of your of your wrestlers you got the respect of your coaches you got the respect of your rival coaches <laughs> keep it up man it's it's awesome to watch definitely thank you thank, thank you for having me i very much appreciate it i I love telling my story. Um, I, I've told it several times, but you know, it's 
it's never it's never enough. It's never enough to let someone know, hey, wrestling is is a sport that you know, like you said, it's family. Once once you're in it, once 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 it's in your blood, and it's like it's like let's go. Like what do I have to do? Like you know, I, I have a girl who's coming out uh, first year. Uh, she's in seventh grade, and you know, mom's hitting me up. Where's the camps? Uh, what's Palmer doing? And then so it's like, you know, what we want to be a part of it. You know, we love this atmosphere. And so, you know, thank you for having me and thank you for sharing my story and have me on again. Uh, there's a whole lot more uh, with coaching through the years that uh, that I did and, and still doing and stuff like that. And, you know, um, if you want to find some more uh, LGB people to speak to you, uh, trust me, I know them. They're out there. Um, there are people, um, I, I can definitely talk to you about Wrestlers Without Borders. Uh, it's an organization I'm a part of Okay. Um, that has um, groups all around the world um, and stuff like that that are LGBT. Uh, L- well, they're LGBT friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, my fault. Not LGBT, they're straight friendly. Okay. <laughs> Maybe, okay. First that. They're LGBT groups, so they're straight friendly. And even the straight guys love coming because it's not, it's not some – who has the bigger, you know, who has the bigger muscle competition. It's wrestling, it's learning and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, please, yeah. I would love to talk about all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we do. We need to get the word out about that stuff too. Right now, I wanted your story to be told, but I think that all of those resources, uh, again, need to be a part of this family. And um, it's only going to push the sport forward, but people, it's we're humans. And, yeah. and we, we need to, we need to figure out how to love each other more. I think. Exactly. I mean, we, I, I would, you know, we gotta love each other, but at the same time, let me throw you. Let me throw you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Let me no throw doubt. you five and then and, and show my love on the mat. But, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks, coach. I appreciate your time. No problem. Anytime.